Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Vulcan, and today we are talking mounts. So if you know me, you know I'm a huge mount guy. I love collecting all those damn things. Now, side note, I did finally get Invincible to drop in WoW a few months ago after years and years of grinding. It was the peak of my WoW career. So I'm just a huge, huge mount person. Okay, so back to Tower of Fantasy. So in this game, we do have a handful of mounts that we can collect. Now, unfortunately, most of them require you to grind certain enemies for a part. Now, the bad part here is that the drop rate on these is incredibly low. Now, the good part is they respond pretty fast. So you can sit there and farm them while you watch a show or you work on homework, however you want to spend your time. I mean, there's even big farming groups that are set up to farm things like the Unicorn Mount or the Voyager Mount. So you can join into one of those, use zero and automatically, I say automatically, but basically sit there and tap enemies. That way you have a chance to get the part. Typically people are seeing between three hours and 10 hours. I saw one guy get like 20 minutes for the unicorn head. But anyway, we'll get into all of that. So what we're going to do today is talk about each mount and where you can find all of the parts for them, starting with some of the easy ones. So first up is the basic mount you get, the first one, the Falcon. You get this after you visit Hykros for the first time. It's part of the main story. So if you're just starting out and you don't have a mount, you'll get this one by default. So there's really nothing to cover with this one. Now the second easy mount you can get is the Rubik's Cube. So this is a pre-registration reward, but you can get it from the rewards menu when you log into the game and after you unlock the rewards menu. This is shortly into the tutorial. Once you unlock this, you'll be able to go and claim it. Now this is available for the first year of the game and as long as you create an account and play, you can redeem it. So those two ones are the ones you can get without doing anything. They're pretty much default. And when you start out, you're going to have one of those two. But all of the others require some grinding and some questing, starting with the chaser. So this is the magic vacuum that you can surf around on. This one only has two parts, and one of them you can get pretty easy, and early on in Astra. All you have to do is visit the Rusty Belt. This is located in the northern section of the area. So it's this big rusty tower surrounded by aberrants. You need to ascend the tower and then loot the golden supply pod to receive it. Now the second part is called the Maglev Stalker. It's a very low percentage drop from the Vermin Brothers. These are these like hyena that operate mechs. They can be found pretty much throughout Astra and Banjus. Now, the first one you encounter is an Astra. Just south of the Mega Arena, it's at Rat's Den Squeaky. Here, you need to make your way to the platform at the very top and then slay the mech there for a chance at the drop. Then the next one you have is Jed in Banjus. He's located in a camp just north of the Banjus shelter. Now, luckily, he is near a teleporter, so you can bounce there and clean him up for a chance at the drop as well. Then you have Mitchell in North Banjus in Rat's Den Mitchell. Again, it's very near a teleporter, which is great. And then the last one is located near the North Signal Station in Banjus, just south of the Lowen Dock. You want to teleport to this teleporter and then head east. You're going to hit a road that kind of weaves its way through Banjus, and that guy is going to be patrolling that road back and forth. You'll see him. He's a huge mech. He's kind of out of place. So I've put together this handy map showing a farming route you can do to maximize your chances. Now each one of these mobs has a two to three minute timer, so you can wipe out two of them and then start over. Now once you get both pieces, you can use them in your inventory and you'll be able to assemble your new chaser mount. Now next up is the Omnium Beast 7. This is a mech rider and it's one of my favorite looking mounts. So getting the first two pieces is super easy. It doesn't require much effort, but the last piece is again where the grind comes into play. So the first piece you get, the cockpit, you can get this by looting the golden supply pod on the hyena oil rig off of the Banjus coast. Now, if you followed my Colossus arms guide, you should already have it. But if not, what you'll need to do is head to the signal station ruins teleporter. Then you want to head west to this point right here off the coast. Talk to the hyena guarding the lift. He'll mention something about his friend being captured by the iron guard in Banjus. Return to the Banjus port and then talk to Lazwall. He's an android. He's going to mention that the hyena was yelling something. This is basically your code to get in. Return back to the oil rig and talk to the hyena again. Choose the bottom option each time and he'll let you into the rig. Then what you want to do is loot the supply pod and you'll have the cockpit. But one more thing. So while you're here, make sure to read the classified document on the wall of the shack. It'll talk about a hyena carnival. This is going to help you out for the Vorager vehicle if that's something that you want to chase later on. Now, the left arm for the Omnium Beast comes from solving the shield door puzzle in the Banjus shelter. 
Here you want to head to the southernmost point in Banjis where Bai Ling is and there's a golden pod behind a shield door. If you want to find the code for yourself, go for it. Otherwise, dot dot dot, enter in 1647 to unlock the door and loot the pod for the left arm. Now the right arm is a very low percentage drop from the behemoths throughout the world. Just like the Vermin Brothers, you can farm them in a very short route to increase your chances. So the first one is in Banjus. He's right next to the Banjus shelter to the south. You want to teleport to the Banjus shelter and then jump off the platform on the west side. You're going to see a clearing with the tent and a monster. This is your first behemoth. Now you can farm him over and over and over for a chance at the arm. The next one is northeast of Banjus Farms. You can take the teleporter for the miners camp and then head up to the top of the plateau to clear him out. Here's the route for that. Then if you want to, you can bounce between the South Banja spawn and this Middle Banja spawn to maximize your efforts. But the last one is located northeast of Mount Targus under a broken highway right next to the small stronghold. Now what I like to do is clean up all three of the spawns to maximize my efforts, and each loop is just enough time for each respawn. So once you get done clearing out the one under Mount Targus, that's perfect timing for the one at South Banja to respawn, so you can very quickly just bounce between teleporters and maximize those efforts. Now once you get all three, you can assemble them out and you are good to go. Now next up is the Voyager, which is like big Wildstar vibes. So this space taxi has four parts, two of which come from the same quest you do for the Colossus arms. So I've linked that video below to follow along if you need help. So the hole comes from a drilling rig off the coast of Navia. Now before you access that rig, you need to have read the Hyena Carnival note from the oil rig off the coast of Banjus. This is the one I mentioned earlier in the video. Now if you didn't, you need to head back and do that now. But before you head out to the Navia rig, visit a crafting station and make a strawberry iced soda because you're going to need to give this to an NPC in exchange for some components. Now to make the soda, you can use two strawberries, which you can find these in North Banjus, two honey, which are located just about everywhere. They're the big kind of purple and blue honeycomb looking things. And then you need 11 carbonated water. These can be purchased from the vendor in Banjus port. So put all of that into the crafting station and then craft it and you'll get a soda. Next, you need to head to Raincaller Island. Head to that teleporter and then head west until you see an oil rig off the coast. Talk to the hyena and select the bottom option each time to gain access to the rig. Now, once you're inside, loot the golden pod for the Voyager hull. Then you want to speak to Morgley. This is a large NPC. Make sure to give him the strawberry soda in exchange for components because you'll need these to activate some watchtowers and get the Voyager engine. So the Voyager engine is located inside the ecological park in Navia Bay. Here you need to activate and fix three radio towers to unlock a portal in Navia Bay. So here's a map of all of the tower locations. The first one to the west requires a password. Enter 5972 to access it. Then make sure you activate the tower. The one to the south requires you to have two toolkits. You can get these from fine gifts that are located in the point store. Press escape, click on commissary, click on point store, click on fine gifts, buy two of them. And if you've been doing your training, you should have more than enough points to purchase the two fine gifts. Find them in your inventory and use them. Then choose the toolkit. Remember, you need two of these in order to proceed. Once you have the toolkits, you want to fix all of the broken generators on the southern tower. There are two inside and one outside on the catwalk. Do not miss that one because you will not be able to repair it without it. Once all of them are repaired, return to the control panel and then activate the tower. Now the last tower to the east requires you to use those components that you got from Morgley. Affix the components and then activate the tower. Once all three of these are done, you'll be able to visit the large beam in the center of Navia Bay and enter the ecological park. Now the last two parts of the Voyager mount are the control station and the thruster. The control station can easily be found and looted at this location. It's behind a shield door. Use code 3594 to unlock the door and loot the supply pod. Now the thruster is a rare drop from the four powers, which are named enemies in Navia. You have Akka, who's located to the southeast of Raincolor Island near the small stronghold here. You have Hethlu who is located on a dock beneath Setus Island. You can get there by using that rain collar teleporter and then go north to the Ravager port. He's in a mech suit. Smoly is located near a password truck just south of the rain collar teleporter. You can find him here. 
And then lastly is Cinderus, who is located at the small stronghold here. Now these are close enough together, you could perform a loop and just clear them out. It shouldn't take too long and it should increase your chances of getting that last drop. Now once you have all four pieces, you can assemble your space taxi and get to cruising. It looks fantastic. It's one of the ones I am very, very eager to add to my collection. Now I'm going to quickly skip the Unicorn Monocross really quick, just to mention that the Dust Wheeler comes from reaching Grand Marshal rank in PvP. That's the only place you can get this one, so if you want this mount, you need to get really good at PvP and just be okay running into cheaters because PvP is rampant with cheaters right now. So just understand that. Okay, so let's get back to the monocross, which is the unicorn. So the monocross also has four parts, and two of these are very easy to get. You just need to find two supply pods and loot them. The other part is given to you after cooking Stoker a fiddlehead pie, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And then lastly, you have to grind out the unicorn head from two devotees named Noah and Eber. So let's talk about the two parts you can very easily get first, the cyber limbs and the bionic frame. So the frame is located in Northern Warren in a warehouse found here. You can enter the warehouse by using the password 7092 and then loot the golden pod. Now the cyber limbs can be found in a supply pod on top of a water tower in Warren. Here's a map of the coordinates and here's what the water tower looks like. Okay, so let's talk about the power core that you get from Stoker and Crown Mines. First, you want to visit a cooking station to make a fiddlehead pie. You need brown rice and fiddleheads. The brown rice can be found around the Rain Collar Island teleporter, and the fiddleheads can be found near the Mount Targus teleporter. You need two of each, but make sure to grab more just in case your cooking fails. But if you can, put in seven brown rice and eight fiddleheads, and you'll guarantee a success. Now, once you have the pie, you need to head to this location and pick up the strange residue. Once you have that, we need to talk to an NPC named Stoker. You can reach him by heading to Sobek, the world boss, and then in front of him are like a couple broken pipes. Above those broken pipes is a very small gap, and this is where Stoker is living. It's literally like a corridor, like a hallway, like a corridor. Talk to him, and then give him the strange residue, and then give him the fiddlehead pie. He'll give you something called an ore extract. At this time, we need to return to the place where we got the residue and activate the power nodes in a specific order. Set the furthest one to three, the middle one to one, and the closest one to two. This will activate a cutscene, and you can now loot the power core. Now for the unicorn head, you need to farm Eber and Noah, you know, and or, you can do both, you can do one or the other. There are two Wraith devotees. Noah is north of the miner's camp in a small stronghold, while Eber is on the east coast in another small stronghold. Here's a map showing their locations. Here, truly, you just need to farm one of them to try to get the unicorn head, but once you have all four pieces, you can assemble the monocross mount. Now, the last mount is the Mecha Bird. Now, this one is not available in the game yet, but from what we know, this will be a reward for completing objectives during an event coming up soon called Road Strife. So once this becomes available, I'll let everyone know, but for now, it's not currently in the game. So folks, that is it. Those are all of the mounts and how to get them in Tower of Fantasy. Which one is your favorite, and have you collected them all yet? Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.